This is Overcomplicated Life Hacks Hot Glue Edition, where we'll provide you with unconventional solutions to common problems. So put those hands together and let's welcome Thermoplastic Adhesive to the stage. Nothing spells summer like a pair of snazzy sandals for outdoor wear. But what are you to do when you find that your expensive pair of Pradas have snapped at the seam? Well, isn't the answer obvious? We're gonna replicate it with hot glue. To start this off, you're gonna need to go ahead and lay out some parchment paper, a Sharpie, and your broken flippy floppy. Find a clean, flat surface and then place the parchment down and put your old sandal on top of it. Using the Sharpie, trace the sole of the shoe directly onto the parchment below. Once that's completed, you can begin the additive process of applying hot glue to form a new shoe entirely. Apply a liberal amount around the edges of the tracing and then fill the interior in. You can fill it in completely if you'd like, but for these beachcombers, we'll be using a grid pattern. All right, now that that's done and drying, get back to your busted sandal and flop open the strap. Go ahead and trace that out as well and repeat the same process you did with the sole. Be sure that all the lines are connected to the borders, otherwise your strap might fall off mid-walk. Now that your strap is complete, go ahead and glue it to the sole itself. Just hold it along the lines and apply a nice blob of glue there to hold it all in place and connect them together. Give this all about a minute to set, and now you're going to apply a second layer of the sole, just to give you a little more cushion for the push-in. Just flip the sandal over and trace the bottom, line by line by line by line. Not only will this fortify your sandal, making it an impenetrable force to be reckoned with, but it's also gonna help relieve that plantar fasciitis that you have going on. Okay, it's probably not gonna help that actually. Simply put it in a safe place to dry and there you have it. When you're ready, slap it on and show off your new limited edition products. Revel in the fact that you're the only one that really knows these weren't $500 sandals. You know, it's sometimes possible to damage or outright lose a keyboard key. Of course, you could grab one from another keyboard, or you could wait five months for Mass Drop to send you a replacement keycap, but we think that making your own replacement is the only way to go. So let's put the T back in QWERTY and with a delicious twist that the kids are going to love. First things first, pop off an existing key from your keyboard preferably the one next to your missing slot. You probably get the point by now, but lay out some parchment paper and completely smother the key in hot glue. Let it naturally flow down the sides and leak onto the paper spreading out in the process. Look, we're making a mold here, so you want some room on the base. If you see any bubbles, try and force them out with the tip of the glue gun, then leave everything to sit for about 10 to 15 minutes. While you wait, go to your pantry and get some milk chocolate wafers that are perfect for melting. Set up a double boiler on your stove top and get those chocolate medallions into a more molten form. The double boiler method is essentially putting one container inside the boiling pot of water. This will of course help prevent the chocolate from burning, because you want this stuff as smooth as butter. By the time your chocolate is melted, your keycap mold should be dry and ready for action. Take your melted chocolate while it's still in a malleable form and cram it right into the mold. You want to ensure that all the space is filled and no air pockets end up inside. You can clear off the excess with a paper towel or your finger and then set it down for a few more minutes to harden. But before it solidifies entirely, you might want to grab a Phillips head screwdriver to make a little indentation in the bottom so that it'll fit over your keyboard switch. Now this of course only applies to people with a certain type of keyboard, so a little improvisation may be required based on the keyboard you're using. When that's all done, bask in the glory of your chocolate artisan keycap. You could sell this thing for $40, or just place it right on your board to serve two lovely purposes. One, you now have a functional keyboard, and two, you now have an even more functional snack for those late night gaming sessions. Oh yeah, break me off a piece of that keycap bar. Everyone eventually drops their phone, and sometimes that's all it takes for a disaster to strike. But what if you don't have a case to protect your Instagram machine? Well, the obvious solution is to create your own version of an OtterBox with hot glue, or to be more precise, the HotterBox. Start off by placing your phone on some parchment paper and carefully wrap your phone completely. You'll want all sides to converge in front of the phone. Using parchment paper is important because it's coated with a silicone layer which allows you to easily peel hot glue from it once it's dry. 
Pull the paper as tightly as possible and tape it together covering the screen. You can even rub the corners on a hard surface to bring them closer into the phone. When you've got your gift wrap phone all set, flip it face down and trace the outer border using a thick line of hot glue. This will help establish our working area and keep things within the lines for the time being. Next, while using a small object, cover the camera lens of your phone, while at the same time filling the interior with a layer of hot glue. You'll need to hold this in place until it dries. Only do this if you still want to have access to your camera when the case is done. Now methodically fill the entire back of your phone. You can explore your true inner artist with various colors. We used glitter glue for our project because not only is it the classiest, but it'll also draw the attention and ire of our jealous peers. Oh, this thing is looking great so far. Now that the back is sealed up, feel free to coat the sides with some thick splats of glue. Thick splats are important because they will protect your phone from drops, impacts, and mumble wrap tracks. After allowing about a minute to set, Flip your phone over until the screen is facing you. In your reflection, you'll see a ghastly sight. Go ahead and ignore that. Use your glue gun and make a lip from the sides of the case, slightly covering the screen and holding it in place. All right, now look at this masterpiece. Go ahead and pop your phone out of the shell if you think you want to snap a photo of it for your Instagram account, because you've now got the ugliest phone case in the world. Well, next to ours, of course. But I know what you're thinking. Will it survive a drop test? Let's find out. We figured that seven feet would suffice for a quick test, so I stood atop my ego and let the phone drop to the ground. As you can see, not even a scratch was made. This hot glue case may be hideous, but it certainly does a great job. Ah, so your fireside gathering netted you a sweet dinner partner at your house. And right before you get down to dining on a couple bowls of expired Cascadian Farms Fruitful O's, you realize that you only have one spoon. <laughs> no worries, have your guest wait in the living room and we'll forge one with a little hot milk. Head over to your nearest work area and lay your spoon on top of it facing down. We're going to be using a slotted spoon because we enjoy things that are challenging. But if all you have is a regular spoon, I suppose that will suffice, but you do lose a few style points. Okay, snag your hot glue gun and start dropping some blobs on the back of the spoon. You want to keep it as uniform as possible, but you can also smear it around a bit with the tip of the gun to keep it even if you'd like. After you have about three or four layers applied to your spoon, you're nearing completion. For all our fellow DIY masochists out there, if you used a slotted spoon, this is the time to flip that bad boy over and start filling the gaps with some glue. Make sure to elevate your handle a bit to keep the glue-filled gap as flat to the parchment as possible. You want it to be a nice, smooth bottom. All right, there you have it, a brand new piece of cutlery that's not only limited edition, but far more classy than what you already had. Now just hurry back to your bowls of cereal and dig in. If your dinner guest already left, then hey, no sweat because there's more for you to enjoy at your table for one. I'm so lonely. We've covered how to get rid of flies in some of our previous videos, but those solutions we presented were far too linear for our complicated tastes. Sometimes it's best to get down to brass tacks by kicking it old school with a sweet homemade hot glue fly swatter. Draw out your customized instrument of destruction onto some parchment paper and get to retracing it with your glue gun. In this example, we found it best to go over the outsides first, making it easier to completely fill the insides without getting any gloop all over the place. So start by tracing out the handle, the stem, then filling the interior in completely. Finally, you'll finish by making a mesh on the interior of the swatter, very akin to how you might decorate your toaster strudel every morning. This is a painstaking and tedious process, but believe us, it'll pay off in dividends. After you have about 10 layers on the handle and stem, and then just two or three on the swatter, it's ready for action. Before you go to battle, take a look at your beautiful creation. Isn't it marvelous? It's time to locate your foe, so brandish your insect eradicator and quietly sneak in and let her rip. Congratulations, you have successfully rid the world of the crawling chaos and obtained a level 16 Diptyran Eradicator. So in this episode, we showed you how to make the hottest new phone case that'll be the talk of your classmates. We Willy wonka your mechanical keyboard. What else, what else? Ah, we showed you how to lose a date over dinner by forging a spoon from hot glue. And we even demonstrated how to make a knockoff pair of Prada sandals. Let's also not forget that we just got done showing you how to make flies fear your presence. 
We hope you learn that overcomplicated inventions sometimes flawlessly solve all your issues, and that sometimes you don't need much to succeed except a little ingenuity and some hot Goram glue. You should see a couple things on the screen right now. I guarantee you that one of them is a playlist that will allow you to watch this entire series in chronological order. So make sure you're subscribed and that you've hit the notifications button so that you get informed on our next video release. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.